Welcome back to another episode of Robots. In this video, we will talk about the safety planes in Universal Robots. Let's start off with the old model UR CB series. You will find this option in the configuration menu. Go into the installation tab, security, and there you will find all of the options. To change any options, you will need to unlock with a security password. But if this is the first time you do this, you will need to go into file, exit, and go into the initial page. There you go into configure robot and define password. For the purpose of this example, we will set up the password as UR. After creating a password or modifying it, we go back into program robot and then installation tab. Same as before, we look for security and then we input the password. Now we would let us change settings. First, we will see a slider. Leftmost is most restrictive. It limits the force, power, speed, and momentum. If we go into advanced configuration, we can set up our own modes, and also we can change the speed of the axis. In the next tab, we have the planes, and in the last tab, we have the inputs and outputs for security. But let's go back into the plane tab. That's what we came here for. But to do that, we will have to initialize again the robot, because when you go into the security tab and unblock the configurations, the robot will stop. So after starting up the robot, we will go into the functions because we will need to define a point, a line, or a plane to create a security plane. In this example, I will use a point. The point is defined parallel to the sixth axis, which in UR it's called risk three. What I'm trying to do is to teach the robot to limit itself to not touch the conveyor belt. To remember better the point, I will rename the point conveyor point. Now that we have a reference, we can go back into the security configuration. There, if we go into limits and input the password, we can define a new plane. Using the copy function, we select the point that we created before. Now we have a safety plane, but it's disabled. So we go into the restriction limit and we select the option. A drop down menu will come out with four options. Normal, Reduce, Normal and Reduce, Trigger and Reduce mode. In Normal mode, there are no limitations, but the robot cannot cross the plane. Reduce has some limitations around that area. Normal and Reduce is both at the same time. And Trigger Reduce mode is after it closes the plane, it starts applying some limitations. And the last option you can modify is the offset of the plane. In my case, I chose a point, but the point is not close enough to my conveyor belt. So I want to offset the plane a bit lower. So I add one millimeter and apply the changes. We click on apply and restart, and then we confirm the security configuration changes. Now we need to initialize again the robot. However, the last point we left it was in the plane position. So now when the robot starts, it's outside the plane. So the system tell us to go into recovery mode. The robot will move at a reduced speed. Once it's outside the area, it will go into normal mode. So let's click OK and check the changes. As you can see, I'm trying to move the robot manually, but once it reaches the normal plane, it doesn't cross the plane. It bounces back. You can try this in various forms. As you can see, I'm doing it with several accesses and the TCP point is never reaching the plane. This way we can secure our robot and make sure it never reaches the conveyor belt. However, it's not foolproof. As you can see, the camera might be damaged, so you need to be careful. But most of the time, this function will suffice. Cool, right? It seems like the robot is not listening to me anymore. On the top left hand corner, you will see the 3D view of the teach pendant. Here you see a point. That's the maximum point of the TCP of the robot, where we have the tool. As you can see, that's the maximum range, and that point never crosses the plane. Now, let's try configure safety planes on the E-Series robots. The steps are pretty similar, but if you skip the first part, let me explain it again. We go into the installation tab, go into security and robot limits. Here, you will have to input a password. But if it's the first time, you will have to go into menu, settings, password, security, and create a new password. In this example, my password will be UR. So we apply the changes and exit. In the configuration menu, we will have to input the password to unlock the settings. In this menu, we will have a slider with some 
predefined profiles. But you can also personalize the speed, momentum, and other safety limits. But to create a safety plane, we will have to go into the plane tab. However, we don't have a reference point or line or plane, so we have to go into the function tab and then create one of these three. In this case, we will create a plane. But to create a plane, you need to initialize the robot. Every time you go into the security settings, the robot will be stopped. So we wait for it to start. And once we initialize, we will go back to the same screen and we will have to click on teach plane. It is quite intuitive to use because the screen will be showing you step by step how to do this. First, we will need to establish an origin point. Then, after moving the robot, we will need to define the X axis. In our case, we move the robot downwards. And then we will need to tell the robot which is the Y axis. We will move the robot to the right side. As you can see, the plane is rotating 90 degrees to the right. The red arrow is the X axis. However, this doesn't matter because the plane will be the same. Now, if you want to create a point, the procedure is the same. You click on the function point and teach the point. This will be a bit easier than a plane. However, it's not so well defined because the plane will be created parallel to the wrist as you can see in the picture. Now, to create the security plane, we go into the security tab, input the password, and then select plane. Under copy function, we can select the point or the plane. If we choose the point, it will also show us the plane that contains that point parallel to the wrist, like I said before. And we can also restrict the elbow not to cross the plane. In this case, we will use the plane to trigger the reduce mode. You can use the predefined settings or create some personalized. In this case, we will personalize some settings. This way, it will be more obvious when it crosses the plane. So now, after changing the tool speed and the elbow speed, we apply the changes. We wait for the robot to restart and then we initialize. Before that, it will show us a menu with the changes. We confirm these security changes and then we try the robot. On the bottom right, you will see the 3D view of the teach pendant and the planes. There are three planes. They are a bit difficult to make out, but basically it's making a triangle shape, trying to avoid the robots on the sides. And then parallel to the robot base, there's a working area, which is the conveyor. Once it crosses this plane, it will work at a reduced speed. As you can see, the planes are different colored. The green and blue is the speed reduction, and the yellow and gray are the blocking areas. Right now, I'm trying to move the robot outside the area, but it's bouncing back. This is because I selected the option for the elbow not to cross the plane. This is a new function exclusive to the E-Series. Right now, I used too much force, and the elbow went out of the plane. So we'll have to go to the initialization page and restart. The procedure is the same as the CB series. You start the robot, wait for it to initialize, and then it will prompt you that you need to go into the recovery mode. So let's wait for it. Here we have the warning, and now we try to initialize, and it tells you to go into recovery mode. Here in recovery mode, the robot will be at a reduced speed, and we will have to put it back into the working area, somewhere where it's not crossing any normal security planes. Now let me show you the trigger reduce speed plane. So we'll use a program to showcase this. As you can see, when it's not near the conveyor belt, it's working at full speed. Once it reaches the plane, it goes into reduce mode. If you rewind the video, you will see that the speed is 100%. And once it reaches the plane, it moderates the speed. You will see the actual speed next to the 100%. And that's it for today. And as always, if you have any questions, doubts, or suggestions, please leave a comment below. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see any more content like this, subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.